Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's try to find the identities for the hyperbolic sine of 2x and the hyperbolic cosine of 2x. Again, it's very similar to the trigonometric functions, so let's see what this ends up to be. Well, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to expand this as follows. We're going to write this as e to the 2x minus e to the 2x, or I should say minus 2x, all divided by 2. What we can do now is we can expand that even further. We can write this as e to the x plus e to the minus x times e to the x minus e to the minus x divided by 2. Now let's see if that's true. What we're going to do is multiply this together to see if we get back the original. So e to the x times e to the x is e to the 2x. e to the x times a minus e to the minus x, well that would be minus e to the 0, and then here e to the minus x times e to the x, that would be plus e to the 0. They would cancel out, so the middle terms cancel out, and these two multiplied together gives us e to the minus 2x. So it is indeed correct. Now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply and divide the numerator by 2 to get the following. This is equal to 2 times e to the x plus e to the minus x divided by 2 times e to the x minus e to the minus x divided by 2. The reason we do that is we have each one of these divided by 2, and now we recognize this as being the hyperbolic cosine, and we recognize this as being the hyperbolic sine, so this becomes 2 times the hyperbolic cosine of x times the hyperbolic sine of x. Typically, I believe they, write, they like to write the hyperbolic sine first, but it doesn't matter, so we could say that the hyperbolic sine of x not the hyperbolic sine of x, but the hyperbolic sine of 2x is equal to twice the hyperbolic cosine of x times the hyperbolic sine of x. Now let's see what we can come up with for the hyperbolic cosine of 2x. That one is a little bit more tricky. So here we can expand this one again to write e to the 2x plus e to the minus 2x divided by 2. And because of the plus here, instead of the minus, we cannot expand it this way. So what we need to do there is add another term and then subtract that same term. In other words, we can write this as e to the 2x plus 2e to the 0 plus e to the minus 2x divided by 2. And of course, e to the 0 is equal to 1, so that's 2 divided by 2. Since we added a 1, we have to also subtract a 1. So now we really didn't change anything except the format. Now we can factor that into the following. This can now be written as e to the x plus e to the minus x multiplied times e to the x plus e to the minus x. Because when we multiply these together, we get to the numerator again. Still divided by 2 minus 1. Now the next thing we want to do is just like with what we did over here, multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2. So this can now be written as 2 times e to the x plus e to the minus x divided by 2. And here that would be e to the x plus e to the minus x divided by 2. We still have a minus 1. So now we recognize this as being the hyperbolic cosine and the hyperbolic cosine. So they're multiplied together. So this gives us 2 times the hyperbolic cosine squared of x minus 1. But then we realize that 1 is equal to the hyperbolic cosine squared minus the hyperbolic sine squared. So this can be written as 2 times the hyperbolic cosine squared of x minus, and this can be written as the hyperbolic cosine squared of x minus the hyperbolic sine squared of x. And then you realize that you have two hyperbolic cosine squared of x here, minus 1, that gives us one hyperbolic cosine squared of x, and minus times a minus, that gives us a plus hyperbolic sine squared of x, so this can now be written as the hyperbolic cosine squared of x plus the hyperbolic sine squared of x, and that should equal the hyperbolic cosine of 2x. And so now we have the identity for the hyperbolic cosine of 2x and identity for the hyperbolic sine of 2x. 
those are the two results. Again, what we did was to simply expand it out, multiply it, or basically factor it. We did the same over here, but before we can factor it, we have to have this dummy term here that we, of course, have to account for with the minus 1. And so that's how we find those two identities for the hyperbolic functions.